What's up guys, Philip Collin, Pack Pythons, back in the snake pit. And today we're gonna do another Nidovirus q and I'm gonna go through as many questions as I can. Hopefully I'll get to more questions this time than I did last time. Again, this is information dense. If you're busy and you don't have time to watch the full videos, please make time to come back and finish them because there's information that is very important throughout all of these videos. And I'm not just saying that so you watch my stuff. If I could condense it down to five minutes and you could get the same amount of information, I would do that. Uh, it's simply for the sake of uh, going in depth, they have to be long. There's nothing I can do about it. Um, I'm gonna try to keep them as short as I can so that you can watch them as you have time and it's a little more convenient that way. But anyways, uh, last time we did a video, uh, we talked about raising funds. I literally posted that video an hour ago at this point. Uh, you're gonna see this in two more days. Uh, I don't have much comments yet to say what you guys think. I've had somebody suggest doing a cash app. I've had somebody suggest doing only uh, <laughs> my <laughs> and only fans with me and my wife, but it won't be you know naughty. It would be funny or you know pictures of our snakes, pictures of my balls. <laughs> uh, anyways jokes aside continue to comment and uh, share what you think would be a good idea for uh, how we can raise funds to contribute to the night virus research we're planning to do uh, if you haven't caught up on all that and you didn't see the first video or the second video I'll put the second video here with the other Q&A stuff that goes over a bunch of things but let's get right into it uh, I got a bunch of questions here that I want to, uh, I want to try to cover as much as possible this video and not spend so much time talking, but real quick, I have to show some love for Atypical Origins. It's another husband, wife, team. Uh, they have an autistic child as well. They, uh, we met on social media. They do a bunch of live streams, lots of love for those guys. And if you guys aren't following them on Instagram, definitely go show them some love. And if they have any other links, I'll put them down in the description. I have, I think, one or two stickers over here that I haven't shouted out. Let me jump over here. Oh, uh. hi Wyatt. Hi. Hi, okay. Uh, was that a monkey with a mask? No, anyways. <laughs> okay, so we have, uh, we just got this one in, f and balls. Move your shovel. Go ahead. F and A's balls. Uh, very cool. I love that that banner uh, sticker. That's really neat. And they also sent over this caution label. Very very cool. And then we got Pope County pythons. I have, I'm terrible at geography, so I have no clue what state that is. If I had to guess, Wisconsin. I'm probably very wrong. Yeah. Don't. Don't uh, chastise me for it. Okay, hold on baby. Let's see, what else we got? Uh, also have serpents, reptiles. Very cool. And I think that's it. Okay, back to work. Uh, again, we're not sure how we want to uh, raise funds for the research that we're gonna do, but uh, I do have my Teespring account open in the description down below. You can find the link and if you want to buy my merch all the money that we're raising from that those sales 100 percent of the money earned is going to go to that research so feel free to check that out until we sort out exactly how we're going to do any kind of direct donations okay enough lollygagging to the questions um let's see um uh, Wanted to, this isn't really a question. I wanted to comment and say that I may not breed in the future to sell. May not. I have no clue. I have no clue how this is all going to play out. The reason I say that is that I do plan to maintain a healthy colony and a asymptomatic colony for research and studying and developing new technology for identifying and treating or managing this virus. I don't know how long that's gonna last. I don't wanna say that I'm gonna keep those animals up there for six months and then euthanize them. 
because I don't know how that's going to play out. I, where I'm building my house, I am potentially going to set up two buildings away from each other with two completely separate colonies, one symptomatic or one asymptomatic carrying the virus for continued research and another for healthy breeding operation. But uh, it's a little cringy. I don't know if people are going to go for that. I mean, obviously, there is always a risk of some mishandling between the two facilities and cross-contamination. And uh, I, I have to weigh the options of do I continue to carry on as a breeding business or do I continue to carry on as a python-oriented, you know, whatever. I don't know. So again, I'm, I'm open-minded to this process. I am willing to, I'm not, I'm not in it for money. I, I was doing it for fun to begin with. And now this has kind of become a bit of a chore, but, uh, Hey, 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 you're being loud. You're being loud. Don't do that. Thank you. Um, anyways, uh, let's see. Not sure when to stop testing and maintain separate colony. Yeah. So I kind of covered all that. Uh, be supportive of wherever this ends up. I hope you guys stick along with me. Uh, we'll see where the future leads. Uh, why am I, not? I also wanted to mention before I go into the questions that I have not called out who's asking these questions. Some of these questions were asked in private. Some of them were asked as comments on public posts. And obviously, if you wanted to go dig around, you could figure out who's asking these questions. But uh, I would hope we respect each other's privacy, and I certainly will respect each of your privacy as you ask questions, because some people, again, like I mentioned in the last video, don't want their name associated with this topic at all. Uh, nidovirus, serpentovirus is, has been such a taboo subject that even people with perfectly healthy collections that are doing all the right stuff and testing all their animals will not publicly talk about this for the sake of protecting their uh, their name, which I get, it, it makes sense. Fortunately, I don't have a huge reputation up to this point to protect. So uh, I'm willing to tarnish my name to some extent in order to push the boundaries of what we're doing with this virus. So just wanted to say that before we get into the questions, I will respect everyone's privacy in this discussion. Uh, let's see, was, first question, finally get to questions. First is, was Venus a recent acquisition? Which is a fancy way of saying, did you buy Venus recently? She's the first snake out of all the stuff that I've tested. She's the first one that tested positive in her necropsy. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link right here. You can check that out. I'm gonna note the time so that I can go back and add that button. So, uh, she was not. Uh, she was part of a group of animals that I purchased when I originally expanded my collection at the end of last year. So I've had her for a year. Um, even if she was a relatively new acquisition, acquisition, I have several animals that have passed and died that were recent acquisitions. I purchased two, three months ago, let's say. Uh, the, but... I've had animals that have gotten sick from almost every person or whatever that I've bought animals or bought animals from, which is to say there's no way to sort out where it came from. It could have come from one breeder and that spread to everything. It could have come from a couple different breeders and that spread around. Uh, it, it, for sure, I bought a sick animal that was asymptomatic, not showing signs, brought it into my collection, and from that animal, other animals were uh, made sick. So, uh, no, it wasn't a recent acquisition, and again, that doesn't really help, even if it was a recent acquisition, it doesn't help sort out where the sickness has come from. At this point, I would say there's no way to know where it came from. I could list off the dozen people that I've purchased from that my entire collection came from, I know exactly where every snake came from off the top of my head. I could list those off right now, but I won't 
because it won't benefit you. You knowing where I bought my animals, if you know snake, uh, uh, well, first of all, I potentially am tarnishing the names of those 12 people. Let's say it's only one out of 12 and 11 people have clean, perfect colonies. I'm not going to tarnish 11 names to potentially catch one that may not have even done this intentionally. It's possible, but not necessarily. Hey, buddy, go inside. Cohen, go inside. My child is potty training and he's walking around half naked. Cohen, why? Inside. Right now. Inside. Inside and close the door, please. Close the door, please. Thank you. Okay. Joyce parenting. <sighs> Moving along. Uh, da, 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 da. Wonder how many in the industry, including myself, have gotten a snake tested. It came back negative, and so they just got on as normal, not knowing the severity of the sickness. Then spreading it and unknowingly. Sad to think about that. Yeah, it is. And that's exactly how this has been spread predominantly for the past five years plus. We know for sure it's been around for five years. That's when it was identified. Clearly, it's been around longer than that. They didn't create it five years ago. Um, they just isolated it and identified it. Uh, animals are tested and get false negatives. From what I understand, about 80% of the time, the, false neg or the negative is accurate which means one in five snakes that are tested potentially come back uh, negative and they're actually positive. And then that breeder takes that asymptomatic animal and just carries on as usual. And that is why we want to push the research, the research to increase the accuracy of the negative results. And I have, again, some theories on how to do that. And I have a biologist in a lab and other virus specialists and vets and all kinds of stuff and all kinds of people that are willing to support me and provide proper information so that I do it correctly so that we can increase that accuracy. Because sadly, this happens all the time. It does. Uh, for instance, uh, Hera, who has been euthanized at this point, uh, tested negative for nidovirus. Uh, clearly, I have nidovirus in my collection. She was very sick with a respiratory infection. It is almost 100% she had nidovirus, but because of the shedding cycle of the virus, it was not detectable at that point when we took the swab. So that is dangerous. That's very dangerous. Clearly that's something that needs attention and I hope we can push the boundaries on that. Uh, would someone sell a, snake, uh, a sick snake intentionally? touched on this last time that some people knowingly have it in their collection uh, and continue to operate as normal. I've heard some pretty bad stories of people neglecting to share information with partners uh, about sickness going on in their in collection uh, and just continuing to hide it for the sake of money. It's sad, but again, like I said last time, I will not assume that anyone's doing that intentionally. But I am not, I'm not stupid, and I know that it's happening. And then another uh, common tactic with this is, let's say I found out I had nidovirus, and I was broke, or I just didn't want to deal with it. Some people, it, it is a known thing that some people will quickly sell their entire collection just for the sake of not addressing the problem. Like, this isn't worth my time. I've got too much money tied in this or whatever. I can't afford to lose this whole collection. So I'm going to put them as cheap as I can and just get these animals out as, as fast as possible. That happens. And it's possible that some of the purchases I made early on when I was expanding could have been from collectors that were doing exactly that. They knew they had sickness. They decided they were gonna just get out of it as quick as possible. And I picked up a few animals here and there from collectors where I bought five, six animals at a time. And it is possible that that's what happened. 
I will not accuse anyone of it, of that, but I will not, I'm not stupid to ignore the fact that it's certainly possible. Uh, here we go. We got three or four more really good questions and then we'll wrap this up. Is it always fatal? No. From what I understand, if you watch the Carpet Fest videos uh, from 2019 and 2020, I don't remember exactly where they talk about it or who talks about it, but there is a place somewhere that is doing research, actively doing research, and they are maintaining two separate buildings with a healthy colony and a asymptomatic colony of snakes. And those snakes are seemingly healthy and breeding. Yes, sir. Please close the door. Close the door, buddy. Cohen, please close the door. Hey, close the door. Close it. Go inside. Thank you. They're breeding, and they're proving that it doesn't actually pass to the offspring. So they're taking two, symptom, uh, two asymptomatic healthy, seemingly healthy animals that are positive for nidovirus, breeding them together, uh, producing eggs, viable eggs, removing those eggs and doing artificial incubation. And after the eggs hatch, they take those offspring and never put them with the parents. And they've continued to test those animals for several years now, and they are still testing negative for the virus, which is amazing. So the, the research that they're doing is really pushing the boundaries. Again, is it always fatal? No. Is it always symptomatic at any point? No. That's the next question. Can the virus lay dormant in affected animals to be spread later, or is it only contagious for sick animals? It can lay dormant, but from what we understand, it's almost always contagious to some extent. There is, with any virus, there's gonna be a, uh, what's the term? Uh, God, I'm having a brain fart. What's it called? A, oh God. Uh, what's it called with a virus when, uh, incubation period, ah, I got it. Okay, with any virus, there's gonna be an incubation period where for some reason, it takes time for it to become uh, prevalent in the body or whatever, or for that animal to become contagious. But once they become contagious, from what I understand and from what the current uh, information is that's out there, this virus stays with them indefinitely, and they're basically permanently contagious until they die. Uh, and they don't have to be showing signs of the sickness in order to spread it from what we understand. Uh, we're going to push some of the boundaries on that uh, understanding a little bit with the research. Last question. How soon after being infected do they typically present the symptoms? They don't. There's no typical time frame. And again, they don't have to show signs to be carrying. So, or to be contagious. This is a complicated mess of a problem, which is the reason why it's so prevalent in the industry and the reason why uh, it's so easily hidden, which is uh, not, not, not great. It's not great, but anyways, love you guys. Appreciate the support. Stay tuned, keep asking questions. I will acknowledge your questions and continue to work through them. And if I feel like it's something that is easier to explain in this format, that's what we're gonna do. But you guys take it easy. I'm gonna put, uh, Eh, let's see, right here. I'm gonna put a circle. You can click on this and subscribe. Stay tuned, this information is great for anyone who has a ball python, has ball pythons, or ever plans to have ball pythons. And really this information is kind of relevant to other species as well, but uh, we're focusing predominantly on the ball python nidovirus, also known as serpentivirus. So click here, subscribe, click here, this is the original video when we found out we had nidovirus. Uh, so that's it. Y'all take it easy. If it ain't easy, don't take it. Peace.